Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the video after the introduction. And in this video, I'll be showing you guys a basic setup uh, to D3 to use D3.js and then doing some basic stuff in D3.js. So real quick, I want to show you guys what we'll be doing at the end of this short video. We're going to just be able to make a little rectangle, as you can see there, a red one. Now that's special. Uh, let's, let's set it up. Let's write a random tag inside of the body called, let's say, let's add some rex. And then also, the important thing is to um, add an SVG and give it an ID so we can play around with it later. Also import the uh, package, of course, like that. Okay, now inside of, let me delete all this. The way d3.js works is that, first of all, actually, first of all, let's, let's go to anything. Let's go to any project, like this one right here. Um, as we can see with any data visualization thing, you're really just, um, first of all, everything goes on in an SVG. Right, and then you probably have some sort of data, right? Like this is definitely from a JSON file, probably. Yeah, it is indeed from a JSON file. I don't know why it's called miserable it's not JSON, but it is. Um, and you're going to render something, right? Perhaps I think each of the each of the array elements inside of the JSON file matches, or one of, each object matches to one node. So there's going to be some data binding as we'll be seeing later on in the tutorial series. Not going to be covering this first though, but there's definitely going to be some selection of the SVG element so we can mess around with the stuff inside of it. And there's going to be some sort of way that we can add children to the SVG uh, using the thread.js because or else where are all these circles coming from, right? If we open up F12, uh, you see there's a lot of children all of these single little nodes are probably inside of a g tag and then the lines and so that's probably the g that contains all the lines and there's probably another g yeah that contains all the nodes huh, i actually never structured my project like that but that's interesting okay let's come back to this though we, we gotta start really basic and let's just do let's just as I said earlier, we've got to find a way to select the SVG so we can mess around with the insides of it. And then also uh, use something to append stuff onto the SVG. So we've got to first of all select it. The select function is really intuitive. It's called select. Uh, D3.select namely. And you just select it so it doesn't do anything. Now let's do something with this. Dot actually. Uh, with dot actually the style okay so that code right there just made a little rectangle so let's visualize what's going on uh, if we open up the Chrome dev tools what we're going to see is that this rectangle exists under the SVG tag so it's a children of it and as we can see after we got a selection uh, we can do that by doing dot append rect so now there's going to be a new child under svg but that child doesn't have any properties we can give an element properties by doing by just calling the dot actually um yeah by calling dot actually and then type in the actual name and then the corresponding value uh you can also do dot style and the style is used for things that are more of the style side. So I think if I do the actually, this might not work. Oh, this still works. But one is giving the DOM element the attribute. The other one is giving it like the CSS attribute, sort of. Um, and you can actually see the difference. If I were to do... If I were to select the red node right there. Uh, you can see that it says style equals to fill red, right? And it says right here, element.style, but it doesn't go right here. It doesn't be, uh, come to the attribute style. And, if, and if, if I were to run the other one, it's going to be, yeah. Uh, so actually, interestingly, I don't know what is the performance of, um, of what is the difference in performance. Maybe there is a big performance um, difference. 
and if I can find it I will write it in the description below so that's really it um, this right here is what we call the dynamic property changing changing the property and mm, let's now let me now propose you a task let's change the color of this to green but but we cannot but don't change it here how do we do that so we probably need to find a way to select the elements again and it probably is intuitive that you do something like this right for now i'm going to do style but as you can see earlier the um using using dot actually here works too so this might seem, it seem intuitive but there's definitely other ways to it for example you can actually re remain in the element selection by doing something like this style fill uh, purple and then let's comment this out all right that changes to purple uh yeah you can remain the selection if you set it to an invariable um yeah and we do that a lot uh, other ways to do it of course you can select it again but that becomes a problem if you i mean yeah it's, it's not necessary to write code like that Let's see what else I didn't cover. Oh, let's talk more about selections. So there is select, there's, which obviously returns only one element. Now to return all of the copies of something called SVG, you do select all, right? And then you're gonna be using that a lot. For example, um, so, I mean, just in that example, they de definitely didn't write the code like that, but they selected all what will you do to append these nodes based on the um, based on the elements in the array is that you actually select all something empty and then do dot append and then enter the data so that for each data there's going to be a new element appended and then uh, manipulate the attribute so yeah you'll be using select all right there some other examples is if you just have to select all of the rectangles in this tiny example uh, you know, you can do d 3 select all rect if I have two rectangles and change the attribute. Now, what I'm trying to get to though is, um, so let's say you have multiple SVG tags, but you only want to get one, but you want to get that unique one. So you can't just do select SVG because you have, you know, three SVGs. Uh, a way to go around this is if you were to give your SVG an ID, and then you can actually select by the ID. Right, so that works right there. Let's change it to make sure it does work so that removes it. So yeah, you have to select by the ID to make it work. Uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. And in the next one, we're going to be talking about data binding, which solves a lot of problems with us and really gets into the core of data visualization.